Thank you. Um, um, and again, I, I ex um, as with the other panelists, um, I would first of all like to thank the, co the Commission for inviting me today um, to talk a little bit about um, um, tools to um, allocate resources to polling places on Election Day. Um, and my remarks are going to come from my work um, with the Polling Place of the Future um, project that was mentioned in the introduction, um, kind of broadly speaking, I, I believe um, Mr. Fortier is going to be saying, um, saying some other words about um, um, activities related to this. But let me just say a few words about the broader program that I've been engaged in really before, um, for the last several years, and actually started during the work of the um, President's Commission on Election Administration. So the first thing, actually the zero thing I will say, <laughs> is that um, um, I have longer remarks that um, I know will be, um, will be published by the Commission, and included in those remarks will be links to various resources that I will be making reference to today. So the first thing I will say is that um, when the um, President's Commission was working, um, the Voting Technology Project um, agreed to host a series of online tools that Mr. Fay just um, um, referred to that are drawn from management science. These are standard tools that are used by retail establishments to establish, for instance, how many checkout lines are needed or how many service points are needed in order to manage lines in, in retail establishments and many other settings. Um, and we um, collected those tools and we've made them available. Um, anyone can assess those tools by going to two websites. The first is still the, um, the PCEA's website, supportthevoter.gov, um, support as well the Voting Technology Project's website, web.mit.edu slash VTP, also is a portal to the use of these online tools. A few months ago, here I will shill for a new resource, uh, Managing Polling Place Resources is a white paper that we published um, last November, which talks about um, um, the intellectual background for people who think that some of these tools are just hocus pocus, um, what's the science behind them, and then also has some case studies about how the tools actually can be implemented. So that's the first thing I would say, is that in terms of pl planning before an election, there are a couple of tools that are up and posted that we have testimony um, from places that have used it and found, it, have found those tools useful. I would encourage um, local officials to make use of those tools, um, um, even now in planning for November. On the other end um, is what can be done in order to assess after the election. And here it seems to me that if we're concerned about how long lines are and making them shorter, then we need to know how long the lines in fact are. Um, again, as we just heard, oftentimes all we know about where long lines are um, occur because some enterprising reporter searches out long lines. Um, and as a consequence, um, very few people have systematic evidence or information about which polling places have long lines, which have short lines, and without precise information about that, it seems to me it's virtually impossible for local officials to take positive action to correct problems as they arise. One of my goals has been to, um, to rely again on the scientific literature to try to understand what sort of protocols and procedures could be put in place by local officials to accurately um, measure how long their lines are at the precincts. And we've hit upon a deceptively simple procedure that's talked about in the white paper I just mentioned. It relies on something called Little's Law. Um, I, could, I could show my PowerPoint deck about um, the derivation of Little's Law, but I will spare you that. Um, um, but so you won't just have to trust me at the moment in which I say that it's possible to calculate with almost 100% accuracy how long the lines were on election day at a polling place precinct if you know two things. If you know the arrival rate of voters and if you know, um, and if you know on average how long the lines were, you can calculate very precisely how long the average wait was. Two very simple things. Almost every local election official knows how many people showed up at the, each polling place on election day. So the real trick is 
measuring how long the lines were on election day. Um, on average, throughout the day, with those two things, you can calculate the average wait time. My time is about um, done, but I'll just say that um, we have developed and will soon be posting for anybody to use a very simple coding sheet. All it requires is somebody in a precinct every hour to record how many people are waiting to vote. One other piece of information, at what time of the day did the very last person check in? With that information, and we've seen in, in many um, jurisdictions that have already tried this out, this is doable, um, very doable. And the information you can get is highly precise and very actionable. And so I will just end there um, um, with just the, um, the final point that oftentimes um, local officials are worried about um, implementing management by data because they're, they are worried that it's both complicated and it will remove their poll workers from important tasks um, in the polling place on election day. And certainly those are legitimate concerns. But I think there are some very simple things that involve a minimum of data that can be done um, that would yield tremendous um, benefits to everybody if they were to, were to implement them. So thank you um, for your time, and I look forward to the discussion.